Let me turn first to why I believe COVID is here to stay. Not to alarm you, but to present to you the signs of how this virus has evolved, and more importantly, how it is now a human-to-human -human transmission. And we have to deal with it. But more importantly, we now have to understand it, and we can deal with it. This all started in 2003. This virus, we believe, emitted from the bat. Bats have such an amazing number of species across the planet. So it transmitted between bats and multiple viruses within the bats. And the bat virus then found an intermediate host in a form of what they call crivets or cats. And that resulted in China in 2003 of one of the first transmissions from an intermediate host of a mammal to a human. Fortunately, SARS 2003 stayed contained in the sense that the SARS was not that infective and was able to be contained and as you could see, 774 deaths. There's a silver lining in that because this SARS cove in 2003 is the parent of SARS-CoV-2 because mutations occurred, which means the scientists have had a head start of about 16 years to understand how this virus attacked the human body and how it hijacked the human body. In the interim, in 2012, it transmitted from a bat to a camel and in Saudi Arabia to the Middle East, and that's called MERS which is a variant of this. Between SARS and MERS, it hit 30 countries and 27 countries and limited exposure. And that's what we meant by an epidemic and not a pandemic. All of a sudden in 2019, it went to human and then from human to human. And that is when this became really dangerous because now there's, for the first time, a real human to human of a virus that's never been seen in, in us as a host. And by 2019 in China, there were 5,000 deaths. So that was the first evolution of this virus from human to human. And because none of us had ever seen this virus and the ability of this virus to not only become so highly infective, but so toxic, the fear is in the United States, we may even possibly hit a high of 100,000 to maybe even 200,000 deaths. And that is why I think there's this great fear about this pandemic. But I think there's an opportunity for us to understand this pandemic as we work through the science. And what we've seen through the science is the ability of this virus to mutate. And this is an amazing graph of all the genomic sequences since the initiation in China of the first virus, as you could see in purple, are the beginnings of these mutations. And what mutates mainly is the surface of the virus, the spike. And as you could see, as it mutates and goes around the countries, there's ongoing mutations. And I believe the amazing thing about this virus, it has to mutate in a funny way in order to survive, because if it's as aggressive as it was in China, it would create its own extinction by not having a host survive. So it mutates, and as you could see, the red is the mutation in the United States. And what do we mean or understand by this mutation is the good news, there's a significant number of base pairs or parts of the genome that are conserved the thing called the receptor binding domain, the domain of the virus that binds to the ACE receptor, the domain inside the structural protein of the virus called the nucleocapsid are conserved. Why is that important? Well, the reason that's important is that we now have ways to attack these conserved portions so we can actually end this pandemic. And this is what the pandemic looks like. This is what we call the evolution of a pandemic starting in China for the first human-to-human -human transmission of a virus that's never been in the human population. Therefore, none of us had immunity. And the rapid spread around the world and all the way now in the United States. 
I think this uh, map clearly shows the evolution of this spread. Uh, it's a remarkable testimony that we are one community, one global community. And as it spreads from China to Europe, to the United States, to every part of this world, we have the pandemic. And this is why I believe this virus is here to stay from the world to the United States. Unfortunately, uh, one of the epicenters is New York, and whether New York has hit its peak yet is hard to know. And credit to the governor of California, we have significantly lower numbers. Perhaps we haven't touched the peak yet, but I think one of the lessons that we learned in California was the very early announcement of Governor Newsom to create the stay-at-home policy to limit the beaches, to limit exposures of crowds, the NBA that uh, uh, canceled all games. It is our hope that this uh, limitation of, of contact will mitigate this, this spread. Clearly, uh, one of the fears we have is not only is this virus highly infective, it is highly toxic. And the toxicity we haven't yet worked out uh, because we don't have enough data what percentage of uh, patients who are getting infected are toxic. There were estimates that it was 20 times that of influenza. But what we do know is that if a patient enters into what we call the critical phase, uh, the ICU phase, sadly, the survival rate or the death rate or fatality rate is 50%, which is an enormous number. If you look from California to our, our local areas in Los Angeles, you begin to see, see in the highly dense populated areas, both of LA, and LA is now a hot spot relative to California. And within LA, the, the, the areas of Brentwood, Santa Monica, and Long Beach. It is our hope, however, that the work that both the, the mayor and the governor has done to mitigate the spread by creating this stay-at-home policy will keep these numbers down. So as we present this COVID is here to stay, an idea that this human-to-human -human, uh, virus now will not only continue to mutate, may, but may come back again. I want to assure the community that the scientists are learning so fast about how to attack and to mitigate that. And I believe that the inflection point of getting to a vaccine, possibly before the next season, if there is a next season of this pandemic, that we will be on the cusp of a vaccine or close to a vaccine before that happens. So while we should be fearful about this virus, we shouldn't panic. I understand that there are great fears, both mentally, socially, economically, financially, about what will happen. We will deal with that in some of these other episodes. But from now, I want to assure the community that both the science, the medical community, are hard at work to find solutions. <music>